Hey, what's going on, guys? Nate here. It's another episode of the Pokey Talk Podcast, episode 8. We're burning through them. This episode is going to be about collection goals, how we collect, how we set our goals, how we achieve them. Hopefully, something can uh, transpire across the airwaves to inspire you or help you out in your own collection goals. Um, we just felt like this was kind of a topic that we had to touch on to clear things up with what we're looking at to be transparent and uh, I think it's good to hit on because of how the market is now in the kind of downtrend and we can reevaluate what we're collecting for so what's going on Philip hey what's going on yeah I I can't wait till we uh, get this episode going yeah so this one is uh, I was really looking forward to it. I mean, we're obviously both passionate about this subject, but we both don't mind talking about our collection goals. Uh, yeah. We both like to go on some rants with each other. So, <laughs> yeah. And I think that's kind of why we started thinking about this, because we yeah. felt like we we're kind of reiterating our stuff we're saying or our collection goals so we just want to put it all out there and so everyone knows that we're clear and going forward we might not have to spend as much time on it so yeah all right but with that checking out the news we have you know surprise surprise pokemon go news but uh what we're gonna hit on first is actually the new Pokemon games that have got released, um, well, leaked, I mean, I'm going to be Pokemon Violet and Scarlet, and uh, yeah, we got a new trailer. What'd you think of that trailer? I really enjoyed it. Um, obviously, it shows what a lot of people are hoping. It shows kind of this open world um, environment that can be played in, uh, kind of like Hedgens Arceus. Um, we did get a few glimpses of the new generation, and honestly, they're really, really good from from what they revealed. Mostly, um, the small of I'm I honestly thought it was Petil or Petal. Yeah, I think was that like Gen Gen five, Gen six, and I was like, oh, that's not even new Pokemon. It, I mean, it looks very similar. It it, it really does. <laughs> yeah, super uh, similar. It, like, yeah, like it, it threw me off, honestly. Uh, but LeChonk, let's talk about LeChonk. Yeah. He's, uh, I, I think he stole the show. He even stole the show from the legendaries. <laughs> yeah, he's the, the palmy. <laughs> yeah, it looks really good. And uh, so, yeah, basically it was featured, I think. Did they show any new Pokemon aside from the two legendaries and then the three new ones? Like, that was it, right? Five new Pokemon? Yeah, they showed. Uh, yeah, they showed a few of the um, starters, yeah. but we we already saw those, obviously. And I think the Palmy is supposed to be like this generation's Pikachu or more or Peko or Togepi or whatever. You know, every generation has to have that cute Pokemon that you can market the hell out of. Yeah. So, what'd you think of all the designs? I mean, you said you liked the Palmy, but what do you think of the legendaries? We got. Uh... Karidon so, and Baridon, or don't even know how to the le- say them. But. Yeah, the legendaries, um, you know, so at first I was like, I'm, I was trying to study them, and they're, they're not bad. I, I think they're, they're pretty neat, especially Maridon, or Maridon, I don't know if it's supposed to spell it like, like Macedon or, yeah. or whatever. But I think it's pretty cool. They look like they're salamander based, like they're based off some sort of like some salamander or Desert design. Um, I'm not really the most informed of the Hispanic culture. Um, I assume they derive something from the area. I would hope. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they. I. I'm probably going to get violet. I'm always attracted to the cooler colors, and honestly, I think he looks cooler. Like he's got like this. It's like this uh, light energy. Or whatever it is that it looks like it, it like this, like a you know how a frog could has its yeah, abdomen or whatever, kind of like yeah. glowing. Yeah. Yeah. What, what about you? I, well, I'm not a fan of flashy stuff. Um, 
I, I just think they're too busy. Um, <laughs> I like kind of the designs, but I don't really like how they're, I don't know, they're standing up. They, they look like something out of battle styles to me, honestly. Mm-hmm. It's just got busy, you know, they try to make it cool. Maybe it's cool to like, you know, I mean, it's obviously cool to some people, but I don't know if how kids like react to that if they really care about that stuff but it's just something that's always been with me like just the busyness of something i'm i'm real minimal real simplistic i love simple design so this is just kind of too busy for me however for all the other pokemon we saw palmy the chunk and small oh lord he coming <laughs> <laughs> like all of those i absolutely like love like this to me might be the best generation just from like what Pokemon they showed. Like I love the starters. They kind of went back to a more simple look. And then these three new Pokemon, the Palmy, Lechonk and Smolvi, they are even simpler. And I just love that simple design. They're not trying to do anything crazy. They just made what looks to be like, you know, just classic, original, simple characters that could have been thrown into Gen 1, it looks like. If, you know, to me anyway, that they just got that Gen 1 simplicity that I, I would love. agree on that. Um, but I do like the creativity that they attempted with the legendaries. Um, especially since Sword and Shield... Yeah. Those were okay, but I felt like it was kind of stupid. Like, you had one literally carrying a sword and one literally carrying a shield. Yeah. Um, and, it, I mean, it worked. They are pretty cool. I have come to appreciate those legendaries. But I think, out the gate, these legendaries are better than their pre- prior generation ca- counterparts. Yeah. I, I don't know. I just think good design isn't this essentially i don't know how to explain it like i feel like the more simple you can make something and still have it be cool like that tells more about a good design whereas like this they just kind of to me anyway how i interpret it they just kind of added feathers or added flames or added glowy stuff until it looked cool and not like went into the good design aspect of it but i mean that just Two sides of the coin. I mean, they they look okay to me. So that's just me being super nitpicky. <laughs> but yeah, because like I don't know, Pokemon like like Dragonite. I mean, I guess he also had a lot of character from the show, but you know, he was big and simple design and powerful. Like he was just a cool Pokemon. And even you know newer stuff like Gudra. You know, he kind of had the same same thing it was simple yet unique and then this is just like taking a gudra and adding a bunch of flair on it to me you know what i like about it it's given me a lot of uh jurassic park vibes too in addition to his clear inspiration from some sort of lizard base specimen yeah they're the the color to me always like usually in nature it seems like usually if it's colorful animal mm-hmm. the more dangerous and you know that's you know the first scene in, or, uh, in the first jurassic park how when the guy that's trying to escape with the dna or whatever crashes and then that small little um dinosaur oh, yeah. like spits out something it, it reminds me of that honestly yeah the just a little bit. Like, is that what it is yeah that <laughs> mixed with like a velociraptor it's like and then you throw in like oh but it's more actually pokemon and that, that's kind of the, the vibe I got. And I, I really like this one, too. Yeah, it's like, I don't know, I, I do see those vibes. It is cool, the direction they're going. I've been telling myself I'm going to buy a Switch for like three months now. But uh, I am I really want to get one and play this one. Because to me, it looks like it's it's a better quality game. You know, Sword and Shield kind of lacked... Um, Arceus kind of lacked in some aspects, but the, the gameplay was there. 
And I think this is kind of a nice blend of both of those worlds and also a little more enhanced with the animation and all that. So I think they'll be pretty solid. Um, I agree. I think they'll be better. They'll definitely be better. I mean, they can't possibly be worse than the previous generation games, in my opinion. I mean, I'm not saying those games weren't unfun, but they weren't exactly fun. Yeah. With Sun and Moon and then Sword and Shield. Yeah, I just really hope this one does a little better. And with Pokemon Design and what you saw, it seems like it could be, but yeah, we'll see. We got two professors this time, Professor Sai. Yeah, I noticed that. I was like, Professor Tor. I don't, th- I don't think that's ever occurred before, has it? No, not really. I don't, I don't think so. So yeah, that'd be pretty fun. Um, not sure if they'll interact with each other or if you have you the choose. certain professor. Yeah, based on what game you have. Yeah, I was, I was wondering that too. If that's how they're going to decide it, like Scarlet gets one and Violet gets the other. Yeah. Or if it's both and you get to choose in the very beginning which one you want, but it makes more sense to do the former with divided up by games. Yeah. And then your friend and guide slash semi rival is going to be Nemona. N E M O N A, Nemona. So it says she loves Pokemon battles. She's an experienced Pokemon trainer, serves as a friend and reliable guide. Hopefully, that guide. Is a, a little light. We don't need any hold your hand walkthroughs like Sun and Moon. <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah, in uh, other news, um, we got a few leaks from the Pokemon Go set. Once again, we don't want to really spend too much time on this because we're kind of waiting on those secret rares. You know, if they're going to release like thirty secret r- rares, we might do a a episode just on the set and, you know, go fest and all that. But, uh, yeah, we did have the radiant cards. I think we kind of were hinting at those on the last episode, but we did have the Charizard Blastoise and Venusaur kind of leaked out. And it was the English. Well, I want to say it was the English variant. So already it loses its radiant luster that you see in the, the Japanese version. Um, they're not terrible in terms of design. However, you know how Greninja has that cool background? They yeah. didn't quite follow that. It was more of like a pattern background that they chose. Like the Venusaur from what I saw was had like some sort of flower. I mean, the, first off, the, the quality photo is just atrocious. So it's so you're trying to see on your phone what it is. But it looks like it's a floral background to match Venusaur. And then Charizard is flame background match him and i i can't remember the uh the blastoise but it was a blue background though i'm pretty sure wasn't it yeah i'm trying to pull up a better yeah. photo here but it, it's like uh it's almost like a yellow swirly background and i forget which uh base card had that but it reminded me of a base card but yeah they're very plain backgrounds definitely not the background like you see on like the greninja but uh yeah yeah i, I could care less about the yeah the english ones like i mean to me it doesn't look special however i think that the, the japanese even with the artwork or the, or the backgrounds i think the japanese ones are going to be the ones that the majority of collectors would prefer don't know if it's gonna go because the artwork isn't like phenomenal. I don't know if it's gonna if it's gonna. I, I don't can't imagine these are gonna be like crazy rare. Um, yeah, and from what we're seeing from uh, Astral Radiance, I mean the pull rates. I didn't watch a whole lot of openings or open any myself, but it seems like the pull rates were kind of similar to Amazing Rares, and uh, we know what the Amazing Rares turned out to be. So I just. I don't know. I don't think they're going to be rare enough, and they're not going to be amazing enough. Like, sure, they're going to have value, but I don't know. They, I feel like they could have done better with these on the English side, for sure. Yeah. We. Can, I, I don't want to say too much until we see the entire set, though. Yeah. Once the entire set's released, if it's not much newer stuff, like I said, we'll at least talk about it in like a news section, but... Might dedicate a whole episode to it if it's some crazy stuff, but 
like if they go several types of alt art, several different mons, hell, if they even do some sort of combination of all three starters as an alt art, I mean, you know, yeah. What what makes it what makes and breaks these sets nowadays is the secret rares because yes, there's people that do collect the set as a whole. That is more of a dying breed. It feels like. Yeah. Um, I, I think there are people that m- might have done it with evolving skies a little bit and like you know the big ones like cosmic cliffs. I'm not sure if this one will reach that status, but the thing that really sets evolving skies apart is its bounty of alt arts yeah so i i so that like i mean yeah there's like v like i'm around v you know you have the whole ed line v but i mean let's be real that those arts aren't crazy either <laughs> yeah so it so i mean it's it's really going to come down to the bread and butter and that's in the modern side which is secret rare so we can't in my opinion we can't really properly address the set until we see everything yeah we did have the Mew V, which appears to be an alt art, which in that's, Times Square. that's the only card I like absolutely love right now. Yep. But um, It looks like it's, it's in Times Square, though. Or if it isn't Times Square, it's supposed to be Times Square. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah I think you're right. And the, uh, the Pokemon logo, which we talked about these logos mm-hmm. before, it's kind of hidden on the billboard. So it, it's not as noticeable on this Mew 2. So maybe that's why I like it so much. But <laughs> like yeah. it's not going to happen. But can you imagine, like, I don't know, um, a Mel Metal or something, alt art under, like, the arch? But I, I think this is what a lot of people ha- have issues with with this set, is they expect, like, known landmarks to be the artwork and background sets, just like many individuals have used to play those same areas in real life and go. And I feel like if we don't see those, a lot of people are going to be disappointed in this set. Yeah, and, you know, we're kind of hitting the mark on, like, Blissey on top of a gym. Like, that's the stuff you like. But if it's just, like, you know, kind of just seems like another set with just, like, city backgrounds, I mean, it's not really as magical enough. Um, We do have the Ditto sticker cards, which is a really cool little gimmick for the set where you pull like a bidoof, but it has a little ditto symbol and it's actually a peelable sticker that is a ditto underneath. So that's really cool. But yeah, we'll, we'll have to see what else they show mm. and hopefully we get the, some more stuff. The starters they have of commons are actually really, really cool. And, and, yeah, and they're each holding a gift, cool. which is kind yeah, of Yeah, cool. I like that. I like that, yeah. And the artwork is, 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 is adorable for all of them. So, like, you know, a lot of people are trying to focus on the negatives when they're saying, like, oh, it, it's just like, I mean, it's just like Star Wars, right? Like, yeah. the Star, Star Wars fan base is probably the worst fan base in the entire world of all fandom. Well, let's be real. And the, one of the main reasons is because individuals expect a certain type of writing or a certain storyline or a certain character or whatever, and if it doesn't reach the expectations that they set for themselves, they hate it. They hate all of it. Yeah. And I, I think we got to be careful not applying that as collectors to this set just because we're seeing it piecemeal-wise. We need to be patient, in my opinion. Yeah. I'm a I'm an avid lover of RuneScape, and anyone plays RuneScape out there, I feel you, but that's definitely the most toxic community. <laughs> so. <laughs> If y'all play RuneScape, okay. hit me up. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, the uh yeah, we'll just have to wait and see what yeah. else comes out. But uh yeah, I guess that's no. really about it with news. I mean the only other thing we could mention, we have the uh global go fest coming up, which by the time you're listening to this will have just ended when this goes live. Um so we'll kind of uh Maybe mention something about that, what we caught next week, but I think we're both kind of busy-ish. I might be able yeah, to play tomorrow. I work. Bit. I ended up working all weekend. I was not expecting that. I didn't ask off because I was not expecting it would happen. But I'm not really upset with it because I'm going to Seattle. I'm playing two Go Fest, one of my all, one of my main. I know some people hate that. Oh, you're stealing tickets. Like, no, I think there's tickets still available. You know, like, there's plenty of time. As far yeah. as I'm concerned, and if I'm paying fifteen hundred bucks to to go out there, I do not care if I'm paying another sixty bucks to go to two days of, of go, go fest. You know, yeah. Um, we we are. I mean, there's we're not just going there specifically 
just, you know, we, we are seeing family as well, her, her, uh, parts of my girlfriend's family in Portland. Yeah. But that'd be a cool trip. Yeah. So I'm not so much worried that I'm going to miss the majority of it. Like, I'll probably only, be, I probably won't, I won't be able to play at all on Saturday. It'll be straight plus at work, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so whatever I get, I get. Sunday, though, I'll be able to play about a third of it. So I'll be able to enjoy a little bit of it. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll get something crazy and you can trade me with some of those actual Go Fest Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. But. I mean, I, I, I assume there's going to be some sort of incentive in person. First Go Fest in three years, I would be very disappointed if there isn't some sort of exclusives in person yeah, for, for this sure. Go Fest. For sure, we'll have to see what happens, but yeah, I guess with that, y'all, it's time to move on to the main topic. Yeah. And that is collection goals, how we collect, what are our goals, how we go about them, and of course, any tips that might help you to achieve your own goals. So I kind of have it broke down for my stuff, you know. I'm going to talk about current goals, how have they uh, applied or how they have changed, and then lastly, personal tips to stay on track or any guides I can give you guys or tips I can give you guys. But uh, what were you wanting to start off on your end? Do you kind of have the same so, layout or a different spot? Well, it's mostly pretty similar. Uh, one thing I did want to say opening up was – Collection goals are perpetually evolving. As we mature, as our knowledge increases within the hobby, it's natural for things to change. You might have one set of core goals, and that, and that might change. That might change, especially if you're just getting in, in, into the hobby. Uh, and now, that's both for me, a good and bad thing, I think, yeah, which I'll yeah. touch on. Yeah, like you got to sometimes you got to narrow your focus and you got to apply some, some discipline. You got to really think about what do you want in this hobby? Are you OK with just going out with the each modern set? Is that, is that all you really care about? That's fine. Just going out, finding the products, coming back and, you know, getting all giddy and, and opening. If that's all you want, like you're just trying to find the chase cards. You just want to buy the chase cards individually if you don't get them. You know, that that is completely fine. Um, a lot of us. When we get back in the hobby, we usually goes by ease of accessibility, and that and that entails what we grew up with. For many of us, especially in our age group, it's going to be what hot seat cards, and then it's what's on the shelves. Yeah, and that, that's how it was for me. That's how it was for you. Of course, it wasn't you know X Y or not X Y. It wasn't um, Sun Moon slash Sword and Shield era, but it was the same thing for you. And, and as you delve into the hobby more, you begin to fine tune your taste. Mm -hmm. Like, like starting to drink, you, you hate beer, but then you begin drinking it more. You're like, okay, this is a good beer. That's a crap beer. And now I'm starting to fine tune what I like as you, as you age. So does your taste and that's okay. Yeah. I think it's just a lot more short term with collecting. Cause I mean, I'm sure everyone who's in, like, you know, really in Pokemon experiences, there's just such a flood of knowledge. If you're really into it, like, like we have been, and, you know, most serious collectors, you're spending months and months just deep diving, just figuring out what you want. Like, oh, I want this. Oh, I want to chase after those promos. Oh, I really like this set. Okay, I'm going to collect all these sets. It's just a snowball. So it's really hard to even make a list or set your goals until you really know the knowledge and like you know everyone will preach to you you know set your goals reach those goals set new goals reach those goals like that process but when you're going through that and sometimes depending on how fast you consume things it can take up to years to have this knowledge and you know with me it was over the cross of like 10 years because, like, I just, I had the deep dive of knowledge, but the knowledge wasn't out there because I started so far back and, you know, they just evolved and things that were $2 became $50 and, like, my goals exponentially increased in 
values, so they became out of reach, and I had to reevaluate so many times. But yeah, you just have to have your own timeline. Right now, pretty much all knowledge that is worth anything is out there. A lot of YouTube channels are just kind of rehashing the same old things. Top uh, 10 items to buy in the Sword and Shield era. Yeah. <laughs> Top 10 ways to invest in modern Pokemon. It's invest like, in this now. <laughs> yeah, so everyone's just saying the same stuff. You can pretty much be you know, safe as far as like consuming what you want now and then making a list because all of it's out there. You can, you can do the research that I've done over those 10 years within like, you know, a week if you really, you know, go crazy, (laughs) but, uh, maybe a month. I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there, Mm -hmm. but yeah, so much that you can't, I mean, unless you're a millionaire, no, not even a millionaire, multi-millionaire, yeah, you're not going to be able to get everything you want or everything you like. So you really need to prioritize and even do a little bit of introspection and even acknowledgement when it comes to your budget, what you can go after and what you can collect. It's, I mean, if, if it's if it's Watsy, you can you can collect Watsy sets, especially base to rocket, very very cheap. Now it depends on the overall condition. Base set, you can still get decent condition for the unlimited to this day and near mint. I mean, when it gets to the hollows, certain hollows with like the big three does start to get a little, little pricey. Yeah, but you'd be surprised how how cheap you you can collect those sets. It's actually cheaper than modern sets because there's no secret rares, and you're just it's just good old hollows. Yeah, yeah. But, but like it, there might be a hollow worth like a hundred bucks, but like that's the big yeah. part of the set. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really start getting pricey until you get hit in Heodestiny. Um, but if you can come to terms with, you know, your current income level, your current budget, and also be patient, not get upset, they're like, oh, I can't afford this. I'll never be able to get it. I understand for a lot of people, especially in our generation, times are rough and you can enjoy this hobby for cheap. You really can. And not feeling pressured or FOMO like, oh, I need to, I need to buy this new hot card, this, uh. I'm Rian Altar VMAX. Anybody right now? Sometimes just because everybody else is going after that item right now doesn't mean that you should. And it's about finding your own pace and finding your own interests within the hobby. Maybe you just want to collect like Charmander or something and like, collect all the Charmander cards. Yeah. That's cool too. And even though like I've been doing this so long, like that's still ever changing for me too. Like, yep. As I said in last episode, I'm actively going through a phase right now where I'm shifting more of a a selling and, you know, tightening up my collection per se is how I like to say it. But, uh, yeah, just uh, really reevaluating things once again. It usually happens when there's a, a shift in my mental thought for the hobby. And a lot of people right now are, you know, kind of taking a step back and chilling. Um. I'm trying to go against the grain. Like, that's, of course, what I want to do. That's what everyone wants to do. We've been burned out on Pokemon for the last year because things got so crazy, and that's all everyone did. But, uh, yeah, you almost have to fight against the grain because people who are buying stuff now and actively buying now, the next time there's a boom like we had, um, if and when that day comes, those are the people that everyone's going to be looking up on like that. They're just, Oh, you just got lucky that you've been a collector a long time. You know, that's what people were saying about all these guys who had all these gold stars and stuff before 2020, you know, they were buying when times were not good and Pokemon wasn't looking good. So that's kind of where we're at again. And history repeats itself. So that's something to think about for as far as people buying things right now. But, yeah, we'll yeah, see how like, it plays out. Uh, I was, I was just going to say, and what those items are will, will vary. Like, for example, and when you want to buy or when you should buy, because it's also finding out what you want to collect with your golds is also about prioritization. Like, for example, if you want to collect, um, let's say you want to collect the modern altars, 
it's at this point it is not a good idea. Or say if you want to do P PSA 10 alt arts, right? Right now is not the time to buy any of those at all. Well, maybe the Sleep and Titar and a few from like Battle Styles. It might be okay at this point for the for for those. But you have to look at, at with PSA. A lot of people haven't sent cards a lot of these cards off because the value wasn't there for a hundred dollars a card. Yeah, and I still we're think not. It's not there. You're right. It isn't. And we're not going to see that until. I mean, I think we're going to see it this year. I really do. We know we're getting our cards back in the next two weeks. Hallelujah. Praise be. <laughs> so, I mean, like, there, there is there is some sort of uh, prior prioritization that you need to accomplish and tell yourself and apply that, that discipline. And what you go after shouldn't be dictated necessarily by FOMO. It should be dictated by your personal choice and the market. Like, say if there's a card you know is low, you think is undervalued and is a part of your collection. Not saying FOMO that you should go after that card and put yourself in a financial bind. That, that's, that's not what we're saying. But if you have the means, you should go after that card first compared to, say, the Altar uh, Umbreon VMAX because we know we're going to get at least one reprint of it and I think we're going to get two personally, at least. Yeah. So we'll we'll see we'll see what happens. But like that that's just an example for prioritization. Here's a little golden ticket for anyone out there who think they have figured it out. Also, so this is something I just thought about while I was cutting grass yesterday, listening to some videos. So you know, it's always been like when a set releases. You know, about six months down the line, when we're through the majority of the print runs, the cards are most available. You know, you hit the peak value as far as, like, buying the cards. Usually at an all-time low, product is still available, kind of hit rock bottom. And so a lot of people are thinking, like what you just said, like the, you know, well, Battle Styles was so long ago, and a lot of people graded that card. You know, there's a lot available, so I'm going to buy that because, you know, it's it's been six months. Well, now you also have to think about PSA reopening. Like, think of how many people didn't grade that card, and we're just now to the point where, you know, sets are becoming available no matter what the print run, no matter what the demand. Even stuff like Evolving Skies, like... Yeah, we're getting a reprint, but even the original print that was so in demand that it demanded a reprint already. Like, there's just so many cards out there available compared to any other time in our history, even though the demand dried it up. Like, there's just 10x times the amount of cards in Evolving Skies and, you know, XY Base. And the golden ticket in there is just think when like the $20 tier opens again, you know, we're going to have another flood of all these cards. People are holding get sent back in. So I th still think they can just drive the price low. And one good example of that is the Greninja gold star from celebrations. It's what 10 to $20 card for a mint copy. I haven't looked at it in a while. It might be even less than that. And the PSA 10 of the card is going for over $100 still. It should be 40 Yeah, people see that and was like, well, it is a great card. Which, yeah, it is. It's a really great card. I, I want multiple of them because I think they're going to be so cheap eventually as well. Yep. But, it should be like 40 to 50 for that card, if that. Yeah, the reason why there's so much is because people aren't sending them in to that level. Mm -hmm. So yep. when the threshold lowers... I mean, the floodgates for that, you know, that could be a year, year and a half old card when the $20 tier opens, and then that's going to drive down even more. So we might be two years away from the low of that card in the PSA 10. So that's what's crazy to me that just clicked yesterday. I was thinking about it, obviously, but I'm not really into modern stuff, but I just don't think people are thinking about that. Like they just think, "Oh, Greninja Gold Star, I'm gonna buy it now because it's at its lowest point." Well, no, there's a lot more coming. 
Yeah, that's just why I haven't. There are certain modern cars I I I just had to have. Like for example, I bought the Sparkling Greninja, uh, the J Japanese variant, and I bought two of them, and I have no regrets. I don't I don't the price range for me I was fine with, and I pulled the trigger on it. It was fifty bucks for at the time all of them available plus two, and two Greninja, and actually oh here it is right here. I just got the. Uh, the second, it took about six weeks, but I finally got it. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, you know, like there's certain things like that, you know, that, that's a part of enjoying the hobby right there. And that clearly is not a main goal, right? Yeah. But it's okay to indulge in something like that, especially as we discussed, Greninja is one of my favorite Pokemon. That's, that, that's what the hobby is about. And taking breaks from that, from like your long-term goals, I think it is important to, to avoid burnout. And sometimes, depending on what your long-term goals is, it might be a way to continue to enjoy the hobby without spending an arm and a leg. Yeah, and to that same testament, like, which we'll get in here soon about our current goals, but I see myself not really owning much outside of WotC, but one of those things is the Gold Star set that I have. So if I go through this phase this summer of really slimming down my collection again, Greninja Gold Star is going to be a card that I really want. And, you know, if it's a hundred bucks, I mean, that might be enough for me to go ahead and buy one, even though I know it could be probably 50, 60 bucks in another year or so when those tiers open. Like, you know, that's just a card that I really want, I really enjoy, and I'm just going to have forever. So instead of waiting two years, I just want to get the gold done and buy it. So. Yeah, that's an example of me, just like uh, you just explained. Just the love side of the hobby outweighs the the strategy, which is kind of how I've always collected. So, but with that, what are uh, what are some of your current goals right now? What are like on a personal level? That was kind of a good so, overview, but yeah, what are what are you chasing right now? So, currently, I just want part of the. I need, I need to kind of start from the beginning in some ways. Uh, not the very beginning when it comes to, like, my goal list. But so my core goal is base set to Neo Destiny minus the gym sets. Um, Why are you leaving out the, the gym reasoning, sets? Uh, well, you know, I'm just not, like, a huge fan of them, honestly. They're okay. But, like, I think some of it has to do with, like, the nostalgia aspect, partially. Um so while I did have a decent amount of that product as a kid, I I don't know. Like there, it's just kind of like a gray area for me in terms of memory, and I'm just not. I know it's cool because it's like from like the show and games, like you know, Misty's uh, Lapras or Misty's Cedra or whatever. But it just doesn't hit me. Uh, I might go and collect those sets later down the road, but right now it's just like, eh. Honestly, I'm more interested with some of the e-reader sets than I am with the gym sets. The yeah. only problem is with the e-reader sets, they are crazy pricey, and that's why they're not on my radar at all right now. Um, but anyways, my core set essentially is, like I said, base to Rocket, and then Neo uh, Genesis to uh, Neo Destiny. Um, now, I have the first three sets complete. Rocket, I'm basically missing just a few Hallows and the Charizards. And then uh, from Neo Genesis to Neo Destiny, I have everything but the Hollows. And I know a lot of people, some people would say, like, well, you should have gotten the Hollows first. It's like, yeah, maybe. But what I was looking at was I wanted the artwork. I really love the artwork with the Neo sets. That was one of what drew it to me. And not just from the Hollows. It was the breadth of the set that I appreciated art-wise. So I actually wanted those so I could just kind of flip through it and look at it. And I still do, and I do not at all regret that decision. Plus, one of the things that kind of was allowed me to go that route was breaking down the price of about the condition I was looking at with my, with my budget. And I was looking at what the, what the prices were. And thinking about how much was made of this product. And I was like, you know what? Especially when it comes to, to Rocket, Neo Genesis, and uh, Neo Revelation especially, there's a lot of this product. Yeah, I was not... Sure. I was, especially with the unlimited variants, which, which is what I have, 
So I really don't have a sense of urgency going after the hollows there. Especially since, like, what, you went to a card show and you got, like, what is it, like, six or eight hollows I needed just like that? Sure. And because you got it, like, so I didn't have to pay the fee, so I, I it was cheaper. And seeing how easy that was just reminded me, I was like, there's so much of this product everywhere. A lot of people have this stuff. I'm not going to go after the hollows to try to diversify what I need. Diversify and prioritize what I'm going after. And that was the easiest way is breaking it down and logically and how, why I should go th this route. Yeah. Now I think there's like in that card show that you referenced just for anyone who didn't, you know, catch it. This has been episodes ago, but uh, that was in April of this year. So I found a good stack, mostly e reader, e series stuff, but sprinkled throughout were some base and Neo hollows and just, uh, showed me when I didn't think it was possible that there was still deals to be found. And, uh, yeah, I, I came out pretty good with that. Speaking of which, I don't know if I told you, I sold the rest of those for like yeah. 250 bucks. Nice. But, nice. But yeah. Yeah. But, uh, that's good. To, good to find stuff in your collection like that. Yeah. And I actually, my goal was to complete those, the sets I mean, I don't have the Southern Islands, unfortunately. But what I plan on doing is just buying the Mew and then buying the, the rest of the set later. Because the Mew is what makes that set cost what it does. And I figure I'll just buy that. So I got the one that, is, if it will increase, I have the one that is going to go up most in value. The rest of the set, if I had to, I can piecemeal it and not buy the whole set. And I'm, I'm okay with that. So I kind of took a bit of a pivot. And I'm starting to kind of look elsewhere. Um, and the main area I'm looking at is more Japanese promos. There are certain Japanese promos I'd like to have to collect. One is the 290 um, Greninja X from, from XY. Uh, I might even buy a few of those. Um, but, at, but like the core goals is the, the Watsi sets. Oh, and uh, actually, I, I didn't forget to mention the Komiya election yeah you've That's been also, doing pretty good with that yes i do or yes i have i'm about 100 shy pretty much almost all hot see i'm missing but the reason why i don't have the complete is because i'm going near mint first edition on what i can and on everything <laughs> yeah so uh so it's 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 gonna take a little bit longer and i'm okay with that so you just gotta be patient you, like I mentioned again with acknowledging your budget, like I know I've mentioned it before, but I'm about to move in like three weeks. And so that's going to cost money. I just had wisdom teeth taken out. And there was a craziness where the the, job, the the business I was working for went under. So I lost my job, didn't have dental insurance, blah, blah, blah. Had to pay everything out of pocket for, for, for the wisdom teeth surgery. So things like that happen in life. And it's okay. And then you can't necessarily be spending money on this hobby or as much like I think I'm spending like 20 30 bucks or like something like that a month like 50 bucks generally and I average like two or three hundred a month before all this but like that's not going to be the case until probably late summer for me mm -hmm. and I'm okay with that because I kind of knew something like this was going to happen not with the, the I kind of I don't know I, did, I knew the business wasn't going well and I, I just had a feeling so I, I went hard for, uh, between February and March to, to, to complete everything that I could and knew I was going to take a hiatus. So we kind of see like, like what my main goal is, this like the, the core goals. And then there's one more thing that I consider part of the core goals, and that is the um, bending series set, red, green, and blue uh, from Japan. And the reason why that is, is, is important to me as the core part of my collection is because of its history to both the hobby and with the games. The, the sets coincide with how the games went area by area, and the artwork even are very inspired. Not all of them. There's some like are very creative, like you have the first illustrator cards are in those sets, and the, those obviously don't look like the games at all. But some of them are heavily inspired by the games, and one of the most notable ones, as I mentioned in the previous episode, was the, the Mewtwo. And the artwork of these sets are some of the best in the entire TCG. And I don't think, I, I mean, I think it's defendably, either if you want to collect 
say you just kind of do all three of them, eat top five, defend a top five set. Yeah. Maybe even sure. top three. But you know, there there are side things. But like since I since I finished, like my core goal is in the Kamiya. I'm being patient on. It allows me to kind of go in other areas with other interests. And I mentioned the Japanese promos. There's some I I can't possibly buy right now, like the Mario and Luigi mm-hmm. uh, cards. Um, those I'm still are some hunting of the... for a Mario, but I'm really wanting to wait to see yeah. if it goes down a little lower. Yeah, and then you have the Battle Festas, you have the 20th the twentieth anniversary one, obviously can't, can't get that, so what I decided to do for myself, after mostly completing these type of goals and being patient with the Kamiya cards, because most of those cards aren't going to go into the Stratosphere, even the first editions. Will they increase? Yes, but his artworks weren't the definitive artworks like a, a, a Rita was. He didn't have the honey makers when he, when he first started. But because he is Kamiya, he is most people's He's basically, you know, most people's or one of the most people's favorite artists. So his stuff is a little bit more pricey, but not crazy. But either way, that stuff can wait. I'm kind of starting to look at now more at things that I believe could go up significantly in value and in the future as prioritization for parts of my collection. And there, yes, there is part of me that is looking at things like buying multiples of things. Like, for example, I plan on buying multiple of that 290XY Greninja in preparation Mm-hmm. For selling one d- down the road, or even two, and I'm looking at ways to p- to potentially get the cards that I want in my collection that are true grails, like the 20th Century Festa, the even the Arceus cards if they ever come up with the Illustrator cards. I who knows if they ever will, but if they ever do, I want that money on hand to be able yeah. to go after that. You know, those those are the main ones. There there are a few you know. Poke Center promos that head are nice, the head I like. I need to have the because it is the Kumi, I need to have this the Psyduck promo. I don't quite have that yet. Uh, but I'm Which, not really that as should worried. be coming back in the order if you want to do a trade or something. Mm, that might be interesting in that one. I guess especially if it comes back at ten. Like I honestly want that card at a ten. I I, can't. I didn't get upcharged for it, but they also dipped enough to where even at a ten, I don't think they would have gotten up. Well, t- tens were like going for like five hundred from what I saw, five six hundred on eBay because they they were they were so off centered. A lot of them were were off centered. Yeah, and I'll so they they know. got hit. Yeah, they got hit with that ding. Um, but well, yeah, I, I mean, would they're... imagine we'd be getting those cards. Next week at the earliest, maybe the week after, but I haven't got another email saying that they were out. But yeah, and then just as like some ancillary goals, I also have like down the road, I'm probably gonna buy most of the Lapras and Greninja cards and the Arceus cards for the artwork. But I'm not worried about those because like for the Arceus, I have the the, the majority of them, and the ones that are going to cost a little bit so and then the one like the altar i'm not worried about it because it's going to come down to price right now it's not the time to buy so it's okay to set like your core goals like i did and even stray from them because you you kind of want to venture into something else and for me if you have a lot of interest within the hobby i think that's the best way to do it to continue the interest and engagement in the hobby Mm -hmm. yeah the uh so just kind of breaking down what you said there. I kind of let you get it all right a little there, bit. But yeah, no. I know. Uh, I realized I was talking a while. The uh, first off, the gym sets. I think you got to go for those. <laughs> I, I just love those. They have both. I think the best and worst artwork of Watsi. Some of the cards, like a card I think about that just amazes me every time I see it, is like Misty's Gyarados. Um, Erica's Dragonair, mostly because I love Dragonair. What are some other ones? Like Blaine's Moltres. Some of those cards are just, they just took it to the next level. Like we were still kind of getting the boring, simple artwork of like Rocket, but we were starting to dabble in a little more artwork. You know, base Jungle Fossil were kind of basic. The uh, (coughs) Rocket sets, you started seeing... You know, like Dark Blastoise, Dark Charizard have a little more flair and stuff like that. But uh, then when the gym sets rolled around, you really had an emphasis on, like, the background and, like, making 
the whole picture like artistic style so it's just a a really cool look like rocket zapdos is another one how he's up in the air like he only takes up like a fourth of the photo but he's like zapping lightning and stuff like that so i think that's where (coughs) the artwork really took off but then you have like some of the crappiest artwork like some of the commons uncommons that are just like cgi or copy paste you know sprites of pokemon (laughs) you know it's just some of it's really bad Uh, yeah i mean i'm not opposed to it and and a part of it like and and had the reason was i didn't have the whole entire set and i wasn't passionate enough to enter that just yet i mean maybe i might go after them just for the completionist standpoint so i can say i have everything from base to, to destiny yeah but i have uh i've always considered them in like my goal like that's my cutoff it's like which I guess I can go into my current goals now, but that was always my cutoff is like base to gym sets because that's Gen 1, you get everything. Um, I do agree, though, like the E-Series and the Vending Series, like, you know, the three E-Series sets and the three Vending Series sets on Japanese side. Between those six sets, those are probably the best artwork ever in... Uh, pokemon um some of the promos are pretty good but yeah those six sets are just pretty crazy and for that reason i've expanded my collection to watsi so i never really collected the neo back in the day because they were pricey but they're part of my collection now and i've even went out to collect the e-series sets and uh for me though i never got the e-series hollows a, there's like 30, 32 of them in each set, so like 96 hollows. And all of them are pretty pricey because they're yeah, pretty scarce. But uh, Plus the crystals. Yeah, which I do have the crystals already, but the the hollows are going to be the, the slow pick. <laughs> so yeah. for, my, for my collection goals as a whole, though, it's binder sets from base to Sky Ridge, you know, all of Watsi. I do not, however, collect reprint sets. So no legendary collection, no base set two. Um, I might buy a couple graded cards in the legendary collection just to have a couple examples. Like I might buy the Charizard Blastoise Venusaur or something because it's really cool. And I'd like to have one of those to look at just because looking at any of those, even if it's a common card, it's just really, you know, it's nostalgic looking at that reverse hollow and what they did back in the day. But yeah, base through Sky Ridge, which I mostly have complete now with exception to the E-Series hollows. And that's kind of all I want as far as a binder set. And I don't really care to get those cards graded. I probably should like my literally the base set Charizard in my base set binder collection is probably like an eight at minimum. Like it's seriously like a good chance at being a nine, I think. So I should probably get that graded and buy a little lesser condition one, (laughs) but I'm just going to leave it in there. I don't really care. Those are the cards that have been with me the longest. I've always bought the best condition I could whenever I bought them and, They've been there for years. So for your binders, do you buy, like you said, with Kamiya, you buy like the best you can, but for your other sets, like what's your condition look like? So for a lot of them, I try to go for at minimum, uh, lightly played. However, there were some cards that I didn't give a rat's ass about when it comes to the artwork that I was willing to come down to like damage. Yeah. Uh, so it, it kind of does vary literally from damage to near mint. Um, a lot of them are going to be in that lightly played to, to low, moderately played uh, range. And I was okay with that because I, I, I try to went lightly play to near mint on the cards artwork that I like the most. Um, I try to bring down the, the tally just a little bit. Uh, yeah. but, but, but my opinion was I can always increase... The, like the condition or go after 
better condition. And what and what you said also has a lot that that you know we 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 could go off a little bit. And sometimes it's okay to sell your near mints to get a moderately played version, so you can use that difference to go after something else in your collection that you value more. For and sure. that's something that I know you've done that, and that's something, that's literally what I'm planning to do. <laughs> like, I mean, that's like, yeah, I got the binder sets, but I'm all these cards I'm trying to go after. It's going to take time, and I'm going to have to be patient with it. And the best way to do it, because I can't be spending thousand dollars of my own money. I mean, I am spending a thousand dollars of my own money, but but you know what I mean. On one on one card right now, I need to get that money into the hobby and then be able to flip it to go up to the next level of cards I'm trying to go after. Yeah, that's the uh, thing I, for me too. Yeah, yeah. It's like uh, you know, yeah. The, when I put money into binder sets, it's just money that I'm throwing into the hobby, and I'm never gonna get back because those are the binders that I plan on keeping the longest. They're probably the thing that I'm gonna keep in my collection the longest, probably until I die, unless I absolutely need the money. Um, you know, and they're the things I look at the least but they're my favorite things to look at. Like it's kind of a weird, weird area. Like I value them. I want to put money into completing those, but it's like, they're also going to be with me forever. And I look at them the least, um, cause they're, you know, stowed away, but yeah, pulling out those binders and flipping through those, like just looking at all those cards in order. They're just like the, the best thing for me just to, go back through it all and see it all throughout the years. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, I just want to complete those sets and just be done with it. I'm probably going to complete everything except for the e-reader hollows. And I don't know. I, I thought about selling my e-reader sets cause I have the complete non hollow sets of all three. Um, and that, alone shows all the artwork because all the hollows are also like a normal non-hollow card so that's been okay with me but they're just not nostalgic i just literally have them because it wraps up the watsy era artwork and they just have some of the best artwork so i don't know what will become of that however i do have a uh, japanese binder as well and that has the vending series you know same thing I love the artwork, so it has Vending Series 1 through 3, and also it has a complete VS series, which is the mm, Gen 2 yeah. gym sets that we never really got in English. Yeah. So. Well, there was a set, but only like one person has it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. so some of yeah. them yeah, got released in English at the uh, Tropical Mega Battle because they were playtesting them. But If you weren't in Hawaii during then, you didn't get it. <laughs> yeah, I think there's like five known sets or something like that. Yeah, from what I believe, which I haven't looked at in a while, but it was at the tournament, and uh, they had some there to play test. How many there was, I I can't yeah. remember, but they deemed them to be like too powerful for like you know playability, and the uh, they were like E series era stuff, so. They were also transitioning to the Pokemon company from Wizards of the Coast, so maybe there's a problem there, but yeah, they never got released in English, and that's kind of why they're in my collection, because between the Vending Series and the VS Series gem sets, like those are the main things that we didn't get in English, so I feel like in collecting all of Watsi, I had to have those too, and uh, yeah. After that, pretty much nothing really matters to me as far as the binder sets. I do have some of the web series, which also has mm. some unique artwork, but I only have the cards that were not in the other sets. So I have like, uh, there's the University Magikarp artwork that was actually printed in the web series. So I have that card. And that card goes for a couple hundred bucks just because of the the notoriety yeah. of the university Magikarp and like that stuff. Yeah, how you had to go about getting it with writing the essay and saying it in and all that. Yeah, I mean, what 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 did they think it was made? Just a few thousand, right? Yeah, I believe so. I'm not really up on that yeah. either. But yeah, 
it's uh definitely one of the coolest looking like unique japanese car it's got a magic carp using what appears to be a hyper beam <laughs> so yeah getting ready to rage into a gyarados <laughs> i know a 10 in those fetch a very pretty penny yeah they got pretty insane and they're still going yeah. up they're kind of like you know the trophy card esque you know they just keep going up not many for sale when one does come up for sale sets record price um they did kind of see a little setback there for a little bit but i mean they're still going strong for sure but other than the binders i mean all i have is that and then my psa collection which that's the main focus of me right now as far as like dwindling down and selling because i am a sucker for jumping on PSA deals that I think are deals and then they're not really parts of my main collection but they're cool to have and then here I am in the summer trying to think of cards I could sell to actually work towards my real goals and then I usually end up selling the cards that I bought <laughs> for that reason but my main focus is the Watsi binders then the Japanese binders as the bending and the BS series like I said and then anything outside of that is Japanese promos graded. So that's my graded collection is Japanese promo cards. And um, the only non-Japanese goals I have as far as graded stuff is the Gold Stars, which I have all those, which I really need to grade. But, yeah, that's really about it. As far as anything that I buy PSA-wise, I really want it to either be a gold star or a unique Japanese promo. I have some things that are like iconic to the hobby, like Special Delivery Pikachu that I've kept, mm, um, yeah. Evolutions Charizard that I kept just because you know it's iconic to the hobby. Um, so that's the stuff I'm looking at selling. It's like, well that money could go towards grading this other stuff that I actually need graded or the binders or whatnot. I have a set of the McDonald's um, hollows of all the starters just because that, that was so nostalgic to run into McDonald's getting those cards during the hype. So stuff like that still I might have, keep. Honestly, I just want to say I still haven't ate McDonald's since then. <laughs> I think I have once. But... I know. It's, that's how much I went. I, oh, my God. I had so many Happy Meals, and then I gave I gave the majority away to homeless people. But yeah, that I think it was like it's like a it's like a two week period. I think I had McDonald's like eight days, and it was like four Happy Meals or something like that a day. It was like oh my god, <laughs> yeah, it was fun though. It just it just reminds me of the craze and like even freaking McDonald's promos, how crazy they were, and they're cool yeah. art. Like I like the art on yeah. them, so I'll keep those just for the the laughs stuff like that but i'm gonna wait till this next psa order comes back and see how much i can sell off of that and how much i can keep and how much i want to keep from that and then i'll reevaluate things but yep i was gonna say i'm pretty much in the same boat with you on that one like i'll be able to uh buy hopefully buy something a few things i have my eyes on may mainly i'm not quite sure where i'm going to go but i'm really leaning towards the 290 x y uh, Greninja, but I'm, I might go elsewhere because we're kind of in different stages of our collector's path, if you will. You're you've already been in the hobby, so you've already ha had that increase with your cards, and you're able to capitalize on that. I'm in an earlier stage of my collection goals and my co collection walk, however you wanted to describe it. So trying to buy. For my collection, which I've mostly done, as, as I mentioned with like the binder sets, I'm at the point where I'm complacent to venture into other areas. I have I have enough to where even if there was an increase, I, w I won't be concerned about it. And I'm starting to venture into cards that I'm okay selling in a couple years, so I can get all that revenue to start going after the cards that I really really want. And it's just interesting because I, you know, you've already been there. You've already, without you even thinking, just with, with your passion within the hobby, and me, I have to take a more patient route. Yeah. Because this is how this is how the the, the grand scheme is is going to work out for me, and it's just sometimes you just have to be patient because it will pay off absolutely. 
especially if you go after the the right cards that you plan on trying to sell or flip, like the uh, end of era sword and shield one. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a pretty good one too. Yeah, and even like if you do truly go off your passion and like you know the cards aren't worth much still, it's like yeah, it it pays off because you're you're doing something you love. And I, for one, feel like everyone needs to have a hobby, like just something to engage in. Um, you know, me, I'm not working as much right now, just doing like as needed work um, through the hospitals up here. So it's like something for me to engage in. You know, I've been feeling the burnout too. Um, this podcast, like getting ready for this, like all the way up until like literally last night at like 10 p.m., when we started talking about it again, like I really wasn't feeling it. And now I'm like ready to go through my collection again. <laughs> so yeah. even if, you know, this podcast gets like one listener every week, if that's how we roll, like I just love doing it because it's a source for me to like engage with the hobby, kind of force myself to like stay in it and power through and you know, like you said, I've I've capitalized on that. So, like, being engaged during this time of low periods is, like, when you will pay off later on. So, it's my way of staying engaged and staying interested in the hobby and stuff like that. We have literal dozens of listeners. There are dozens of them. <laughs> dozens? <laughs> There's dozens of us! Uh, but, no, like, that's, I mean... I just the fact that there's people that are listening to it. That's that's, that's all I care about. Like I don't. I when that, when we started, we didn't really expect this to be like, oh, we're gonna be millionaires. You know, that was not the intention. Although we, you know, we do hope it can pick up a little bit. Uh, but we're not too too worried about that at all. If people are gonna listen to it, they either will or won't. I mean, it's just it's just that easy. <laughs> I always and, uh, I always think of it like when I do YouTube, like. Which yeah. I knew it probably wasn't gonna like immediately take off, and it's like just with podcasting, it's just you got to keep doing it for years, and then yeah. people slowly tack on and tack on, and it kind of snowballs. But and it is good content. It's just a matter of people find it, and I hope it, it does find people that can benefit from the the content itself. And I, I think there are people. That's why we do have consistent listeners. Yeah. And for me, that's that's what makes it worth continuing to do it. And just enjoying it because you're right. It keeps us engaged within the hobby, and it keeps us active. Yeah. And like I, I haven't bought much in like like two months or something like that within the hobby. The the basically those the Radiant Group cards are the last ones I bought, and that was like six weeks ago or four weeks ago or something like that. But uh, you know, and that's fine. Yeah. It, it's it's okay to and even go into other hobbies. Say I don't know. Say you like golf, and you weren't able to play golf too much, or you say you like going to concerts, and the reason why you haven't gone to concerts is everything with the pandemic. But now that things are kind of, kind of getting back to normal, you can pursue that passion again as well. And you, you kind of have Pokemon on the back burner, but you know what? They'll be here when you come back. And for those that have chose to stay in the hobby, even at a casual perspective, as you mentioned, it will pay off. Yep. I was going to say something else too. Oh yeah. Just like for making content, you know, even back in the day, my goal for YouTube was always like a thousand subs, which I achieved on my main channel. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's just weird. I, I made videos on like my main, like IRL channel with like vlogs and stuff. And then I hit a thousand subscribers and then I just like stopped making videos like, I don't know why, like, I didn't set that second goal. But, you peaked. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, you know, and still, I get people commenting. I uploaded Pokemon videos on that channel, like the difference in First Edition, Shadowless, and Base Set. And I still get people commenting on that video, which maybe that's where most of them came from, because that one took off. But I pinned, like, a comment, like, hey, I have a Pokemon channel now. If you're interested, watch this updated video where I talk about the fourth print as well. But, you know, YouTube algorithm's funny in that way, but I do want to put more effort into my Pokemon channel this summer, um, starting pretty much this month. 
I mean, I've been talking about this for a while. Will I have more free time to actually be more creative? And that, that starts next week. So, yeah, we can have a video of, uh, I would love to let's have a video of us opening the, uh, the cards if, if possible. Yeah. Yeah. I've got more opportunities coming for sure. The first list that I made for what I wanted to collect was all over the place. Like I'm looking through it now and holy cow, like every, every era is, is hit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just maybe, yeah, in that it's period like, of all that info yeah. that I was talking about. You just, and that's why people need to wait until they have that knowledge. Cause you just like, Oh, I want this. I want this. I want this. So perfect example. Yeah, we of that. Get, I mean, literally, literally everything like, okay, so c- complete Kamiya collection, uh, I got Team Rocket, all the Neos on here, the Level X cards, Watsi promos, new products at the time, like Star Birth for Japanese, Arceus Brilliant Stars, Celebrations Gold cards, uh, all the Hidden Fates, PSA 10, <laughs> Black and White Era, Full Art, Zeke from, Restaurant, Pikachu, all, you know, those secret rares, like the Hack and White one, uh, Japanese Tag Team GX, the box, and then you got the Tag Bowl box, you got the Dream League box. <laughs> yeah, and then I, it even goes further because I, I also broke down all the collection for like the games I, I I wanted to like all the Ratchet and Clanks and Halos and all that. Yeah, that's how yeah. I am. Like I have a running list of like everything I want on my phone, but it's like real small. But for Pokemon, yeah, my stuff changed too. The earliest thing I can remember, you know, obviously Base Jungle Fossil, which I completed pretty quickly, so it was like a hundred. To 150 bucks total back in the day. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my earliest goals where I was like really into the hobby was when Legends Awakened came out. Um, and I made a binder and it was like, I set my goal like, okay, I don't want to collect these whole entire sets, but I want the secret rares. Like every time a secret rare came out, there'd only be one to four or five in each set there there was nothing like 30 like you see today but it was when the platinum was out and like rising rivals they reprinted like the scyther electabuzz and hitmonchan i think it was as hollows from base set so like those were the three secret rares of the set and like all the secret rares were like a unique thing like they reprinted the base set charizard with like an updated artwork in stormfront so i had a whole binder of every secret rare, starting with um, Dark Raichu, all the way up until Next Destinies, which was the return of the EX cards. Um, and that all fit into one binder, which was crazy. One 360-card binder. And I had little inserts, paper inserts of each card, like where each card went. Um, there's one set, I think it's Unseen Forces, that has a secret rare of every single unknown letter. That was in the binder. Um so yeah, it was a nice, it was a nice daunting task. Like looking back, I wish I would have just stuck with that collection because that would have been cool. But the reason I stopped that is because they started releasing like so many secret rares. Full arts were just a thing in the black and white set with the restroom and Zekrom. And then Noble Victories had like special Meowth and then like a full art in. And then something else, like a special Pikachu, I think, in the black-white set. So that's when they started to change for more secret rares. And I was like, all right, this is just going to be, like, impossible. And then I did that thing I do again. I slimmed down my collection. I sold all that stuff and, you know, reevaluated my goals. (laughs) But, uh, yeah. Real quick before we go on to other topic, though, uh, we did our current goals, how they've changed. What about personal tips? Like, what's your number one tip for setting goals in your collection? Like, what's your way of doing it? Well, we kind of hinted on quite a few tips, didn't we, about prioritization, you, you, losing your budget, um, using introspection into your personal interests. Like, we, we, we did kind of give out a lot. But one thing that I'd recommend, that this is this is what really helped me to narrow my focus was write things down that you want. Either use a Google spreadsheet or um, 
use a I, if I mind in color note on, on on my phone or even write down by hand if that's what you prefer. You know, fun fun little thing to do. Um, that helped me not channel, but like document things that I did like in the hobby, but I kind of wanted to see if it was just like, ooh, that's shiny, ooh, you know, piece of candy, ooh, piece of candy. Yeah. Uh, I, I was I, I, kind of like a way to prevent that impulse buy or that impulse feel of FOMO that you might get. And documenting it not only helped me learn the eras more, but it allowed me to a card that I might have moved on completely. Oh, I actually do like that card. And then you might look back and think, uh, no, I'm, I'm not interested in that. Yeah. It's kind of a good way of um, venting, if you will, in some ways is to like you're going through what you're you're interested in. I would say that's definitely the, the main one. Um, and the other one is gaining knowledge within the hobby. I, I would say those are probably the two most important things. Um, For sure. But... Yeah, but hopefully, you know, this, we helped a little bit. Maybe tr try to channel your focus if you're struggling to find a path to follow. Because sometimes it is difficult. I mean, we, 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 we are saying this. But even Nathan, I mean, he's been around the block a little bit. You sometimes, there's cars that come up. And you're like, oh, I might have to get that. But, yeah. but then you change your mind. And I'm the same way. Like, oh, I might have to get that. But then yeah, I really I try to wait as yeah. long as possible. Like I'm still waiting on the, uh, <laughs> you know, beauty looking back Pikachu. I did pull the trigger, but then it kind of fell through. But <laughs> I'm no, still, still waiting that. on that. So because for me, you know, we're, we're discussing history a little bit. But like for me, I'm I'm also interested in history of each generation as well. And I got that card. Because when I saw it, it was, it was immediate. I realized that was going to be the most iconic. That was going to be one of the most iconic promos of this generation, Sword and Shield. That's why I got it. You're collecting notables within the history. And, you know, in 20 years, as you do that, that's when the the full the full image, if you will, of your collection kind of takes shape. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, man, I got all these core things within, within the history of TCG from WotC to... Whatever they're on in 20 years, I don't know, um, Axe and, and Sword or something, you know, or a Axe and Shields, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, but you know, like that, just having that sort of experience within the hobby and what you're interested in will build after a while. Even if it seems like you are facing an insurmountable goal, just be patient. Yeah, I think... For me, the most thing, you know, yeah, like you said, knowledge is the number one thing. Like, just get as much knowledge as you can, because the more knowledge you find, the more they'll change. But, like, you know, lists is my way of doing it. So that's my my tip. Make a maybe make a grand list or make a tier list. Like, make an entire list like you did, and then take like half of that, and then make a new list take like half of that, make another list. Or one way I do is like I have my master list and then I think of if I had the money, like what is the absolute most like I would spend in one go on a collection. And like sometimes if it's collecting sets, that's usually about like $500 for me right now. Like I'll make, I'll make an entire list on like TCG player. Like I'll scour eBay and when I hit like 500 bucks, like I'll be like, okay, I'm going to wait for all these cards to come in and then I'll do another order. Like that's just my mark. I rarely do that, but when I'm really feeling it, all right, I'm just going to go all out. Like that's my number. So I take my master list and I make another list that's about one to three times that number. And then that is my current goals. So enough where I could like splurge three times and complete that. So that just narrows it down for me where it's like somewhat within reach. But, you know, that's obviously changed a little bit right now. I'm not spending nearly that much when I do orders now. I'm like looking to like 100 bucks here, 100 bucks there. So I might look at my list and make a separate list that's like 500 total and like knock that out one at a time 
and then make another list of like five cards, like $100 each, and then knock that out one at a time. So that's my way of doing it. I think that's a really good way. The problem, like you said, making a master list, you'll splurge on that, but then, you know, you'll kind of buy something else and it's not part of your plan. And if you're really methodical and can stick to that list, that's good. But the smaller the list, the better I do and the better a lot of other people do. Like you don't really want it to be years away. You want it to be like my next two or three purchases away. And then that'll really keep you focused in. But yeah, that was a good main topic though. I guess we can uh, move on to the QA with that stuff, huh? Yeah, I feel like we did, we did pretty well there. We really went through everything. Yeah. So there's lots of other tips. If you guys have tips of your own, you know, leave a comment on our post or something and we'll kind of go through them. And uh, it's always good to, to hear what everyone else has to say as well. But, uh, yeah, going on to the Q&A. All right, for the Q&A section, um, kind of came up with our questions at the last minute. <laughs> I feel like we do that just to kind of be relevant in case we see a good question pop up, but also kind of scan the forums and see if there's any good topics around. But, uh, yeah, you got a good question for us this week? I think I have a decent one. Um, it goes off of some of the news that came up in the last week. Uh, okay. And so with reprints of Pikachu on the ball, Darkness of Blaze ETVs, Sword Shield Base, ETC, is anything safe from a reprint? Uh, I don't know. They announced that they're going to be reprinting Evolving Skies also. Yeah, um, and we, I guarantee you there's going to be at least one more reprint after that because it's the set will be in rotation until 2023, August of 2023. Yeah. Probably September because that's technically the full two years. So that's that takes us to the end of the next season's championships. So I can guarantee you there's probably going to be another, maybe not a massive one, but there's going to be something. Yeah, I think, I, I don't know. It's just so hard because the printing is like changing so much, you mm -hmm. know, like popularity's going down or what appears to be going down, but so product is more available now. So are they going to change their printing regimen based on that? Um, if there is less demand, does that open up more opportunity to print different products with older sets? You know, they're also expanding their printing. They bought that, you know, printing company, so what's that going to do to the printing? Is that going to free up a lot more stuff to reprint? I would say, yeah, just if you're investing in something, you know, thinking that it's the best modern set of all time, like Evolving Skies, which it is a great set, no matter what, no matter how much they print it, I think it's going to have some value there. Just like, you know, look at Evolutions. People... I just so burnt out on evolutions. There's so much available, so much out there. We kept seeing it through 2020, even though it's a 2016 product. Um, but, you know, there's still value there because people just love the set. So I don't think anything is safe, but I think it is, you know, less worrisome if you're after the sets that people just really enjoy, you know, if it's a set that's kind of in the middle that it needs a reprint because the demand's there, but it's not the most loved set, those would be the ones to really stay away from because those are the ones where if they get reprinted for whatever reason, they might, you know, stay pretty low for longer. But sets like Evolving Skies, even though we are getting a reprint, like that just makes me want to be on the lookout for a Evolving Skies booster box. Because if I see it out there for a hundred bucks, like I'm gonna scoop it up. Cause for sure, yeah, it's just such a good set. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I I don't think anything is safe when I think of modern. I think even all the way back to Shining Legends and Evolutions. So it, the fact that we saw Evolutions pop up here and there, you know, I'm not sure what it could mean from things before then. But anything. 2016 to now is definitely on the table for sure. 
but yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't see them. Well, I, I I don't see them going back to evolutions. Um, I think there's just a lot of there was some sort of distributor or they had some warehouse that just had a lot of products still left over, yeah. uh, which is indicative of how much that set was printed. Um, now, I think really you got to go back to Sun and Moon era. I think that's kind of the the time frame you're looking at. Anything that was still available on shelves or in rotation during the 2020 hype, I think, is fair game. Uh, so that includes basically 2018 sets and onward, which 2018, I think Shining Legends was 2017, late 2017, is that correct? I, I'm pretty sure it was late 2017. It was around 2016, sure. but I'm not sure. Shining Legends, I, I think it, well, we'd, we'd have to check real fast. Uh, shine... I'll check uh, out but, the release date here. Yeah, you, you check out. Yeah, uh, it is 2017. Just, yeah, just, so. it, it was March of 2017. October 2017. Yeah, I thought it was towards the tail end of 2017. Um, I don't, I don't think that far back, but anything really 2018 and onward is fair game. Uh, now the Pikachu on the ball is really notable because there, obviously, it was released around the, the pandemic during the pandemic, and it was only really available in the UK. Now it hit. I know I, I had to do a little bit of research just to see. How, how far it hit because i knew it was pretty high well it's thirteen hundred dollars in january of 2021 thirteen hundred dollars um it was about i know it was at least 400 in spring of this year early spring i'm pretty sure it was like in january it was like seven eight hundred now now they're going for about 80 90 bucks and they're going to re-release these promos to uh, a gaming chain for game stores and that's going to send it down probably to like the $30 range. Yeah. It's still so, an iconic, but yeah, it's going to be great card. I really less. want it. To, yeah. I, I really want it too. I mean, I will get it once it goes down to that price range, once those cards come out. But I think this is notable about, this is really important when looking at trying to jump into something because you're trying to catch the, the hype train. Yeah. You know, we, we mentioned this before, but if everybody's already talking about it, you've already missed it. You've already missed your chance to, to get in. Uh, it's about literally looking at things that are under the radar. But this is one reason why, like all these reprints, this is one reason why I sold everything with Modern to fund some of my core collections that was mentioned earlier and i don't regret it at all like evolutions i still have the open products of, of, of all everything that opened because i love that set because it's what got me back into it yeah but it was the first set i really opened but when you look at people quote unquote investing and they're all holding the same crap i think you should be really really reconsidering what you're holding on to because the evolving skies will it eventually have value yes i sealed ones i absolutely believe that for booster boxes the problem is you're not going to reach the heights that you're seeing even on first edition boxes of non-base sets so like your team rockets your neos you're never going to see that price with evolving skies at yeah. least not anytime soon. Maybe when we're old at that point, in which point it's really irrelevant. <laughs> yeah, but what I, what I think of, it's like, you know, imagine they're not going to reprint everything. Like after the first wave, second wave, third wave, that's what we get. It It's still, yeah, everything's going to go up, but so many people are doing the exact same thing. They're mm -hmm. buying boxes like investing is not investing in modern it's you know it's doing what everyone else is doing hoping to make a little buck when you could do a little research buy older cards or buy promos and grade them and make that money like within a month and but people are like buying these boxes oh i'm gonna wait two three years just to what like double maybe if you're lucky hundred dollar box to two hundred dollars i mean yeah that's good but you can have an eye for grading cards and make that really quick, you know, but sometimes people like doing that. They like collecting the ETBs or the boxes and just, you know, storing them or looking at them and collecting and that fine. way. Yeah. 
if, if, if that's what they enjoy part of collecting, that's completely fine. However, if you're doing it because you, for stonks, you should really reconsider what you're doing. Yeah. Even like promos, like that's why Pikachu on the ball, like isn't safe. Any promo like that is not safe anymore because Even if it's delivery Pikachu. Yeah. Well, because of special delivery Pikachu, that's why like this mindset has set in, you know, it was mm -hmm. actually exclusive and it was hyped up and it was kind of limited. Yeah. 20 bucks a card at one point before people caught on. Yeah. So like, that's what made them change to like this model and we were going to have special every Charizard. Well, look at what they did to that. They just shut that down. They memed us. Yeah, they shut it down, memed us, probably laughing at us, talking about how <laughs> stupid the American market is. Got him. <laughs> but now every release now, like that Pikachu on the ball that ended up being like a special delivery Pikachu situation where the demand was just crazy and it was limited, they're going to turn around and do what they just did and re-release it again, make sure like it's not crazy. Um, that's why they stopped with the staff from staff promos you know so it's just they're they're shifting it they don't want the market to be like that yeah and, they don't want it to be like the sports market that's exactly right they don't but it, yeah. it, i don't think it's because of out of the kindness of their hearts i mean yes they do want parents to just be able to get it but i also think it's because of the ja the japanese philosophy when it comes to profits they believe they're a lot of times they believe they're entitled to secondhand profits and I think they also see that, and they're like, we're not going to allow you to be making this money off of our product. Yeah. I, I believe that that's a part of the sentiment. Yes, they do want people to have accessibility to their products, but I also believe it's because, like I said, they don't think you deserve to have those heck of hand profits. Yeah, and they're, they're okay with stuff being somewhat limited because I'm sure this Pikachu on the ball is still going to be a little limited, but it's not going to be over a hundred dollars limited and i think no. they're okay with that but yeah i don't know i think the the time of special promos that are super limited is coming to an end unless it's like a japanese special product like we've been talking about many times yeah so. the, the end of era sword and shield and even then that's not i mean eventually that's probably one of your cards that are, are obviously are one, one of the highlights of this era and that card will probably do well than almost any other sort of short and shield promo. But yeah. it, they're using a they're make to order system. So coming out the gate, it might be high at first, like when, when things first start shipping out. But give it about three to six months and you'll start seeing it plateau. And then I probably for what you think maybe a year, maybe a little more. It'll kind of it, it may trickle up a little bit, but not as substantially well. But then give it ten years. And like you said, being he, being in this hobby during a time when other people aren't will pay off. And this is a perfect example. Yep. For sure. Well, for my question, <laughs> it's not, <laughs> not as in-depth or like such a talking point to that. Kind of a lighter question. Um, so, yeah, what made me think of this question is like that the hobby was kind of reaching a low, a lot of people getting burnt out and whatnot. But... I feel like I've done this, and so I'm curious to what you have to say. But okay, it's what is the easiest way for someone to expand their love for Pokemon? So obviously, it's going to be different person to person. But if if you're burnt out, you're tired of cards. Like, do you venture out into anything else, Pokemon, or you know, what do you do just to kind of diversify your interest or keep your interest in the hobby? Well, first off, you got to listen to the Poke Talk podcast every other Sunday. Yeah. That's how you maintain interest. <laughs> but uh, um, so, what I like to do is, you know, I there's sometimes you can't always be spending money. It's just not feasible. It's just not practical. And for me, I maintain my lower Pokemon to playing Pokemon Go uh, to various degrees of intensity, obviously. Uh, but then I also even watch the show. Yes. I'm a grown man, and I still watch the Pokemon show. Um, I don't go out to, like, the uh, try to find a streaming service to watch it dubbed. I don't need it that bad, um, mainly because almost every site I try to find is just cancer in some ways. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but um, 
these are ways that I've always done it, and I really like the show. I really like Go. I like how this new series, how how they're doing it. I think it's great. I think it's the, probably the best since the original, or one of the best. But that, and I'm in Discord groups, and I'm in uh, subreddits for Pokemon, and that, that's how I maintain it without always being just like buying the hobby or trying to hunt for the product. Which, I mean, I don't have to hunt the product anymore. I go to Walmart every single day. I mean, not every single day, but every single time I do, there's plenty and a product available. Yeah, that's good to see. And like, I mean, the things I do is like, yeah, when I'm in Target or Walmart, I'll sometimes buy a random pack. And like, I mean, if I don't get anything, I'll like toss the cards or put them in a box for bulk or something. But I, yeah, I thought about buying the packs. And then I saw it was like, we'll meet with half or five dollars a pack. And I was like, hell no, I can't, I cannot like find the booster box is just so much easier because I just can't feasibly buy one pack knowing how much more I'm paying per when I can get it so much cheaper per from a booster box. Yeah. Yeah. It is pretty rough with the prices and all that. But mm-hmm. Yeah. Another thing I do is, uh, like buy non TCG stuff. Um, I kind of went on a spree a couple months ago, like the last Pokemon item I bought that was card related and like significant to my collection was in January. Um, but since then, I've bought a couple things. Like, I bought a rare poster. I bought the storage box I had as a kid. The, uh, oh, what is it? The Suncast storage box. The toolbox, right? Yeah. It was like the two. I, I had one of those, too. I don't. I think I just threw it out one day. A lot of but people had one, and a lot of people recognize the box, but you just don't see many people with them nowadays. But I use it as my storage thing because, like, if I ever want, something with storage in it why not get that box and i found one that was really good condition the stickers were not you know used at all it's really hard to find those without the stickers because they had advertised the stickers and like you can put you can customize your box with these stickers so of course every kid like it's (laughs) stickered them up but yeah when i got that there's only three on ebay so like stuff like that is really cool to me like finding unique items that I either once had or or iconic. Um, another thing I bought was that giant Arcanine plush, which I actually, right before we recorded today, got charged for. So I think it's going to be shipping pretty soon. I I, I can't wait to see it for you. Just I mean, <laughs> live by vicariously. I mean, I would never spend that much money on something like that, but. It's cool that you did, and I can (laughs) still see it in person. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. It was rumored that it was pushed back all the way to June, and sure enough, June 2nd, I got charged. So we'll see if I get that at the end of the month. But yeah, non-TCG items, I'm starting to find a love for those again and you know, build up a collection in hopes to have maybe like a dedicated room or something. But. The yeah, the thing that comes to mind for that from that same vein is uh, the Pokédex. Yeah, I that, I looked at those that, too. I, uh, yeah, that I specifically remember that toy. And yeah, uh, yeah that I I I got, I got that for Christmas one year. I think I got that and the that toolbox and the same Christmas. We need to do like a video or podcast of like our our top non TCG items. <laughs> like as long as it's not like the other stuff we see on YouTube, I'm, I'm down to do that. It's just, let's try not to, you know, do- delve into that same, yeah. same concept. Yeah, for sure. And yeah, I mean, if I don't want to spend money, another thing, like I like to draw. So like, Maybe one day I'd hope to get into like making more artwork or like unique drawings of Pokemon. If I ever got back into drawing again, it's something that's kind of been in the back of my mind, but have a lot of stuff to do. So whenever I'm just dead bored and caught up with everything, nothing to do, I might get into that a little bit again. But yeah, there's plenty of things to do out there to yep. get in your love. I'm, I might be buying a Switch with a new game coming out, so probably be doing that no, a little bit. I just get it. Just stop, 
That's what I'm talking about. Just do it. <laughs> yeah, I need to. I think about it too much. It'll not happen. But with that, let's check out the game corner and get that rolling. Uh, I got a, I got a little old Pokemon, but in a new way from a newer set. So okay. curious to see so if you'll Pokemon, be able to. Old Pokemon, but newer set. All right. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll curious to see if you get this one. It's, it's got a little hint in there. But okay. you might take the hint the wrong way. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. It has the ability to alter the composition of its body to suit its surrounding environment. Is it Ecleon? No. Is it Ditto? No. Mm. <laughs> See, it kind of throws you off, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Repeat it once more. It has the ability to alter the composition of its body to suit its surrounding environment. It's almost Probably. like misleading, tricky. Is there another hint? <laughs> it's can, a, I, can I phone a friend? It's a normal type. <laughs> Okay. Um, it only has two letters in the name, but it's not like a two-letter name. Evie. <laughs> yeah. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. It's Evie. That is tricky. I would have never guessed that. I mean, the, you gave two e e easy hints. Uh, <laughs> the, the the last one was easy. The normal type was a little tricky, but I was like, ditto. That, that it's perfect. Yeah, you know? I figured you would like take it as like a Kecleon or morphing and it is kind of misleading because I yeah. guess but it does because of like the evolutions if you have the stones yeah so, so yeah if by alter you mean evolve totally into a different Pokemon then yeah it makes sense <laughs> yeah but yeah kind of tricky there that's the Eevee from Astral Radiance artwork by Sao Sao and very cool artwork. Evie just chilling in the forest and blending in. So, what you got for me? Okay, so I have... I was actually wanting to see the artwork of that one, but I'll go ahead and check that later. Um, the Pokemon's body is covered by fine hairs that can only be seen under a microscope. Uh I feel like I know this one or I've read this one before. I was worried you might be too familiar with this one, but I was like, we'll just go ahead and run with it and see what happens. I like, I've literally read this or like heard it before. Let me see. Is it a white Pokemon? I, I, think, it's it's kind of I, think, I think it's kind of tricky. Um, I, I would lean no. On that one. Hmm. Fine hairs. Read it one more time for me. Yeah. Uh, so, let's see. The Pokemon's body is covered by fine hairs that can only be seen under a microscope. That's a mew isn't it there it is yes yeah the next I, one i was gonna say is i mentioned this card earlier in the episode is the next hint. i was gonna see if you're gonna able to, to get it it is the mew from southern islands yeah i think that's literally the card i read and maybe that's description to somewhere else but yeah i know i've i know i've heard that somewhere i was thinking of like a white or like a light colored pokemon i was thinking like wiggly tough but maybe the yeah, pink it was tricky because it's like he it, technically he is pink, but like he's white. I don't know. It's like a pink hue. But then there are some from the older variants that it is straight pink, but the newer ones have kind of become more like a pink hue. So yeah, he said white, and I'm like not quite white, but it's like got white in it. Yeah, I kind of like the fine hair in some of mm -hmm. the artwork, but yeah, I knew I heard that somewhere. 
Anyway, I guess that about wraps it up. Mm -hmm. That's uh, the game corner for you guys. So hope you all enjoyed this episode. I let us know some feedback. Let us know if we like ramble on too much or if you like it. We're just trying to be the podcast that's, you know, not too much in depth, kind of lighthearted info, just easy to connect with if you're a normal collector. So give us some pointers if you have anything that you'd like to hear. So anything you want to leave it off with? Uh, I would say we have a few ideas for the next episode. We haven't quite decided on it, um, but don't worry. We will have a good one again. Uh, it's just sometimes we're just like, it's between a few. We kind of want to see if there's any big news that drops. And you yeah. mentioned earlier with the, the go set, we might do an episode, maybe not the next one, but the one after focused on Pokemon go and go fast, seeing what that stuff's like. The in-person go fast, not the, uh, global one that everybody could participate in, but it, we'll just have to see though. So, yeah, we'll just have to play it by ear, see what they announce for the, for the set. It'd be really yeah. good. Like if they could, if they did have like 30 something secret rares and they announced all of that and then, you know, I kind of want to be surprised, to honestly. I kind of want, well, I, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, ho- I hope they hand out packs and, and they're straight up. Like they're yeah. going to be printing this at hardcore. I mean, it'd be good to like do all that in one, but I think we'll probably see the go set. You know, and all that info before. Pretty soon, you would think, but I released the second or next episode, like the twenty second or something like that, or no, the nineteenth, I think. Yeah, I think about it. So, all right, but we'll let you know one way or the other, guys. Be sure to check the description for all of our links, and be sure to check us out on YouTube and all the podcast areas, and reach out on our Instagrams, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace. All right, see you all later.